How long does it take people to get over their exes? It's a good question. And there's a different answer for everybody. And I think context and circumstances are very important. Are you the dumper or the dumpy? Are the kids involved? Was it toxic? Was it a good relationship? These are all very good questions surrounding that topic. But I think the better question would be to ask is that, okay, what am I actually doing to get over someone? Now, I was talking to a client of mine today, Matteo, and he said something very interesting. And he said, Nick, I'm now able to talk to that rejected part of myself and to talk myself down from the cliff whenever I'm feeling bad or about to reach out to my ex. And for a young man who's not even 20, that is one of the most powerful things that I've ever heard. And so maybe we're asking the wrong questions. Maybe we're asking the wrong question as in, okay, how long does it take to get over someone? Maybe the better question should be, can I talk myself down? Am I doing the right things to get over my ex? Am I putting the right steps in place? Have I established my boundaries with my ex to say, no, I will not be friends with you? You dumping me has consequences. So that's the subject for today. And that's what I'm going to try and tackle today. So stick around, come take a walk with me and let's get you onto the path of breakup recovery. With that said, welcome back to The Love Fix. It's Nick, as always, trying to get you through your breakup as easily and as healthily as possible. And if you need my help with your personal one-to-one breakup situation, you can reach out to me at thelovefix20 at gmail.com to arrange a one-to-one voice coaching session with me over Zoom. And I will do my best to get you over your breakup. So let's get into it. How long would it take you to get over your ex? Truth is, guys, I don't know. How long is a piece of string? I don't know. It will take as long as it takes. Now, there are many statistics out there. And I think the most bullshit one that I see is it will take a month for every year you've been together. Now, I can tell you from personal experience and I can tell you from coaching hundreds of you by now, that is absolute horseshit. In fact, some studies with empirical data will suggest it can take up to four years. Because we are grieving someone that's still alive. And grief will take its own path. Grief will take as long as it's going to take. But there are things we can do. We can do things to help the process along. So it's not a case of getting over someone quickly. It's a case of more getting over them correctly, healthily, efficiently. But it's going to take as long as it's going to take. And the fact is... Maybe we need to ask the question, do we ever really fully get over someone that meant a a, a great deal to your life, that brought so much love and fulfillment to you and had a huge impact? And I've mentioned before in some other videos that we are a a makeup, a combination of everybody that we encounter, especially lovers and partners. And when we spend a significant amount of time with people, we take part of their knowledge and we integrate it into them. So you could argue that I'm a, I'm a combination of my family, friends, and ex-lovers. And I would say that's probably true. I had my time with them. They brought a lot to my life. They brought a lot to my personality. And they're part of my story now. And that makes part of me now. I took some great things from all of my ex and and no doubt they took some things for me you know personality sense of humor knowledge just you know maybe some wisdom somewhere along the lines so do we ever really get over them and i don't know if that we do but i think we learn to live with their absence we develop tools to talk ourselves down from the cliff we develop awareness why we feel the way that we feel So maybe we need to stop trying to get over someone and just accept, okay, there's always going to be a place for that person in my heart as long as it wasn't toxic and they wasn't abusive and so on. But let's cover some things that, let's shall we say, are best practices to help you get through this. Therefore, sticking with that premise, guys, do not have any kind of booty call with your exes. 
The temptation's high because you are familiar with that person. You have been intimate with that person. It's comfortable. You know that person. You know what they like. They know what you like. And our survival mechanisms will always try to take us back to the place where you last felt safe. But in this particular case where you last felt safe, it's called, that is now causing the problem. When the cure, when you think the cure, that is the, when you, you sort of see that as a cure to get rid of your anxiety, it's actually becoming the disease. So when the cure becomes the, the disease and it's exacerbating your anxiety because once you leave their house or they leave their house and you're not really back together again, it's like, okay, now what? You know, you've had a quick fix. You had a quick shot of serotonin and dopamine and adrenaline and all the excitement, but that wears off very quickly and there's no guarantee you're ever going to see them again. So you're never going to heal if you keep going back to the person that rejected you, that's just never going to happen. So guys, no boot, no booty calls. You need to stay away from your ex. And of course, no recovery video will be, would be complete without me saying, guys, no contact. This one's obvious. I go on about it like a million times. But a lot of exes, a lot of people that will dump you will try to offer you friendship for a multitude of reasons. They want to make themselves feel less guilty and they also want to use you to get over you. But it's a low ball offer and it's just gonna keep you in a place of non-recovery and no, that's not okay. So they've caused the trauma and now they want to extend the trauma by keeping you as a friend now i'm not saying that that they are doing it deliberately deliberately the dumper goes through their own trauma they don't just wake up and decide oh hey i'm going to break up with you today no it's a big lifestyle change for them and they will revisit in their head they will re they will go through it at some point or another unless i mean there are exceptions to this rule unless they checked out emotionally about a year ago and they've already done their grieving and it's taken them a year just to have the courage to separate from you and then maybe they've already made that clean cut and you know it's done but whatever they do do not give them the benefit and the satisfaction of your contact of your continued presence there are consequences to them leaving so guys stay no contact and i still have many many should we say passionate conversations with many of you about why you have to stay no contact and many of you will make some interesting and well let's just say there's some interesting mental gymnastics going on why people should contact their ex so don't do it guys being single being single is fucking awesome if you let it be Guys, I've been single for almost two years. And whilst I did not want my breakup, obviously I didn't want to go through a breakup, I've had some wonderful experiences since then. Some grand adventures, meeting new people, doing crazy things, you know, climbing mountains, going to other countries, new hobbies, dating new women. It's been a blast. Don't get me wrong. It's been a tough, tough journey. And there were times I thought I'd never get through it. And I, and I, so many times I wanted to contact my ex. I'm not saying this is easy. And hey, this channel was born out of that trauma. So embracing this new opportunity you've been given. You've been given the gift of freedom. You've been given the gift of a rebirth of leveling up and doing things better than you once did before so just like how a snake would shed its skin shed your ex's skin for lack of a better term that he's been covering you because guys as relationships yes they are a good thing but they do come with their own baggage and headaches and i'm 38 now i'm a lot closer to 40 than i am 30 and I view relationships very differently now. And if I was to get into a relationship now, 
how I would be assessing that whether I'd be letting a woman into my life is like, okay, is this woman going to enhance my life or is she going to detract from it? And if she's going to detract from it in any way, then she is not entering. She's got no barrier to entry here. Rather, she's got, no, that's the wrong thing to say. Rather, there are additional barriers to entry there. So it's a case of, right, do not give me a headache. My life's pretty good. So, and also single single life has its headaches as well. Financially, I would argue being single is probably a little bit tougher because, you know, uh, at one point I was living with my ex, we were splitting finances and so things were a little bit easier. You know, I'm a, I'm a single guy, don't get me wrong, I earn good money, but the financial strain on that is a little bit tougher. So that also limits the opportunity. So, okay, what? how much property can I buy? How, how many holidays can I go on? And that kind of thing. So there are ups and downs to it. But guys, single life is pretty fucking amazing. So you have to find other ways of filling that gap. And what a lot of people do is they they use a partner. They use a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, whatever you want to call it to validate themselves to give themselves 90% of the internal love but if you can flip it around and love yourself and validate yourself like 90% then they're the cherry on the cake they're the icing and the cherry on the cake your partner should be like should be making up the last 10% of your life not the first 90% and if you can embrace single life guys you'll find yourself getting over your ex I wouldn't say quicker, but let's just say a little bit smoother, a little less painfully. And who knows? A great single life is very attractive. And that's when you start attracting people that are more your speed and more on your level, more compatible. And that's when you find the forever partner. But let's face it, guys, your ex is a fucking arsehole. Let that sink in for a second. Now, don't get me wrong. My ex is a good woman, she's a good mother, we had a good relationship, but she's an arsehole. And the ex before that is an arsehole. And the ex before that is an arsehole. I'm an arsehole. Everyone's an arsehole. Basically what I'm saying is we've all got bad habits. We all do things that drive somebody else crazy. And that's the thing. So what I want you to think about is was your ex really that great? Think of all the negative stuff that they said and and the stuff that just used to annoy you to the point where you would happily beat them to death with with their own shoes, for example. Now, I'm not condoning violence in any way, shape or form. This is just a metaphor. This is just me with my very dark sense of humor. What I'm saying is there there were times where you would probably think to yourself, I'm going to jump headfirst out of the window if this person doesn't shut up. So... Hold on to that. Hold on to the negative side of your ex because we only see the positive. We look, we 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 romanticize the past. We look through rose-tinted glasses, and we only see the good. And this is a fading effect bias. But let that go. Always tell yourself your ex was an asshole, even though there was a good person, even though there's the nicest person on the planet. They're an asshole. And that will hopefully help ease this process. So I don't know how long it will take. It will take as long as it takes, but there are things you can do to ease the process, to move the process along. And my friends, forward is forward. Doesn't matter how slow it is, forward is forward. So keep that in mind. Enjoy the rest of your day. That's all I've got for today. And I do apologize for me slurring a little bit. I was out last night. I had a few drinks. I've had about two hours sleep. And I am now trying to coach clients and make videos on YouTube. Not a good combination. As always, guys, I hear you. You've got this. I'll see you on the other side.